We've been fixing up a lot of warehouse performance issues over the last year or two. And what I'd like to do this week is look at some of the causes of those issues, the symptoms, and some of the solutions coming right up. So welcome back to the channel. Uh, we've been looking at dozens of warehouses over the last year or two. Uh, a lot of consulting clients have been coming to us with issues around capacity and warehouse performance, uh, too much stock, their costs are escalating. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time, a lot more than we normally would, on warehouse audits. So I thought I'd share some of the sort of background to that and some of the things that we're working on to help you sort out your warehouse problems. Okay, so why do some of these things come about? We'll talk about that, some of the, some of the solutions, and stay right till the end because I'll talk about some of the symptoms that you should look out for as well. So what are some of the issues? I think one of the key issues has been over the last couple of years that people come to us and say, we're running out of space. Um, I, I saw a warehouse a couple of, I had a flashback, I saw a warehouse a couple of weeks ago, um, which I have to say is probably the most full warehouse I have ever seen. Um, that record was held by a warehouse in Malaysia that was at 115% capacity. This one I think was more. Uh, that was, <laughs> this was at home in Australia. Um, and typically people come to us because they're running out of space. And they very often want us to design new warehouses or to redesign their current one. But where do you think you should actually look to first if you're running out of warehouse space? It comes down to what you're stocking, your inventory policy and so on. So we'll talk about that in a moment when we get to solutions. People often ask me, um, how full can a warehouse be? So I mentioned that I'd seen one at 115% capacity. Normally 85 to 95% of the actual capacity of the warehouse and you're starting to constrain operations. So if you've got, let me keep the numbers simple, if you've got a, a warehouse with 10,000 pallets in it, uh, once you start to hit about 9,000 pallets, you're going to start restricting the actual processes within the warehouse. So, you know, because you can't have all of the slots full, you're moving product out, you're moving product in, you're, you're receipting, you're dispatching and so on, you need some working area. So you can't actually run a warehouse at 100% capacity normally. I say normally because I'm sure someone's going to comment down below that they run at 100% for, for whatever reason. If that's the case, I'd love to hear from you. But normally 85 to 95% is thought to be capacity, depending on the sort of um, storage media you're using. So capacity is the number one that people come to us with. Uh, performance. Uh, is also an issue I think we've seen a lot of over the last couple of years. And it comes down to things like um, accuracy. So picking accuracy, inventory accuracy, um, not necessarily the speed of picking, although I've, I've seen some rather strange picking operations in the last few weeks as well, uh, which were far from optimal. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, one of the issues I mentioned right up front, which causes capacity issues, is poor stock management. And you've probably heard of the term slob or slobex. Slob stock, slow and obsolete. Slobex, slow, obsolete and expiring. So you've really got to keep on top of that. Um, CFOs hate <laughs> getting rid of stock and, and getting it off the balance sheet. Um, but you've got to make sure that your inventory management is really good, that your phasing in of new products and phasing out of old products means that you haven't got too much obsolete or slow moving stock around. Um, it's very interesting walking around. I mean, I've walked around hundreds, if not thousands of warehouses, and you get a sense immediately of how fast and slow some of the product is moving. Um, you know, there's the old white glove test where you can wipe the top of boxes and things and it's thick with dust. Um, try that in your own warehouse. But trying to ensure that all of that inventory is required, it's, it's moving through at a good velocity, you know, that's a way to, to minimise the capacity that you need. Um, the other thing that people come to us a lot for is increasing costs. And, you know, until you lift the lid on the warehouse, there's, there could be all manner of things driving increased cost. It could be a change in order profiles, could be a change in products. Uh, could be a change in, in the warehouse, but look out for that as one of the symptoms uh, and that will enable you then to start you know, lifting the hood on your own warehouse and, and checking out what's going on below. So what are some of the solutions? Those are some of the reasons that, that people want to have a look at their warehouse and think they need to improve it. What are some of the solutions? Um, some simple ones can be layout. 
you know, depending how the product is moving through the warehouse. Uh, and I'll share some links with you in a moment where you can look at a lot of this in more detail. So when I'm talking about different layouts and stuff, uh, you can have Uflow where, you know, you come in on one side of the warehouse, the product's receipted, stored, picked, dispatched and goes out on the same side. You can have through flow where it's coming in on one side, going into storage, going out on the other side. You can have L flows, all sorts of things. So the layout itself can have a really big impact on the performance of the warehouse, uh, particularly around picking performance. And I'll talk about slotting in a minute. Um, so the type of storage media as well can have a big impact. Um, sort of a 30 second case study. We had one client a little while ago who was running out of capacity in their warehouse and they were actually thinking of moving and wanted us to design a new house. We said, well, hang on a minute, you've got some really wide aisles here. I mean, it was that simple. Uh, and what we did was to work out that we could get 30% more capacity into the facility just by closing up the aisles. Now, the astute amongst you will say, but how did that impact their materials handling equipment? Good question. Because they were using reach trucks in these uh, wider aisles, so they have quite a big turning circle. We looked at articulated forklifts, so we didn't even need to go to narrow aisle or very narrow aisle. And these articulated forklifts could operate in much narrower aisles. So they've got 30% capacity there. So, you know, there's some really easy wins just in terms of the layout. Um, the other thing to, to look at is the processes. Um, the picking processes, are, are you actually doing goods to person? Have you got, so that's where you've got totes coming to the, the picking area. All the orders are being picked and the sort of totes with uh, extra product are going back to storage. Um, are, have you actually got pickers going around the warehouse, sort of old style? Um, also, how are you actually laying out the products in your warehouse? Because that has a huge impact on the pick path. I think I mentioned one, once before when I was doing my master's in logistics at university, there was a guy there doing a PhD on pick path algorithms. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's that complicated. So the pick path is really important where the A products are, the B products and so on. So the actual processes themselves, uh, a lot of people come to us and say, what about technology? Um, I'm usually kind of cautious about technology. I, I think a lot of companies want to have the latest technology. Um, I don't necessarily advise that they do that until we've really gone through the numbers and come up with a solid business case. Um, you know, I've had clients in the past who said, look, we, we want everything that opens and shuts, all, all the whistles and bells because we want to look good. Uh, you've got to make sure it's justified and you're going to get the return on investment. So there's all sorts of technologies at the upper end of the scale and the lower end of the scale that can certainly help. So if you've got a very basic warehouse, that can be a solution. Uh, inventory I've talked about. Um, the things to look at in terms of inventory, though, are accuracy at, at, at a number of levels. So have you got the right levels of inventory? So your ABC analysis, so you're carrying the right stock of the A's, B's and C's and so on. And what about the inventory accuracy? Uh, do you have instances where people are going to pick locations and there is no product there or insufficient product there? So that, that sort of indicates a bit of a cycle counting and, and process issue. And of course, that's going to impact your picking accuracy as well. So inventory can be a big one. Uh, and then I mentioned slotting. Uh, this is something we've been doing quite a bit of lately. So I've got a video on slotting. I'll, I'll add some links to that. But slotting very simply is a method to reduce the picker's travel path. So if you've got pe people going into the storage area and picking area to pick products, so you have, you're not bringing products to the pickers, you want to minimize that travel distance. And, that, and it's really quite sort of scientific the way that you do that. We, we do that with special software. Um, and you can minimize the pick path, reduce the travel time, and therefore increase the picker's productivity quite significantly. 15 or 20% is, is not uncommon, even more. Um, and if you're wondering what slotting is and how do you determine where to put those products in the warehouse, think of your fridge. I think it's always a, a great analogy. Depending on what part of the world you are, when you open your fridge door, um, what's in the door section. So for us here in Australia, it's probably going to be things like milk, butter, eggs, the things that we go to frequently. In the back of the fridge is the stuff that we go to less frequently. That's exactly how you should lay out your warehouse. 
near the dispatch area is all the frequently used items, the equivalent of the milk and eggs and butter and so on. And then as you go further back into the warehouse, the less frequently used items, just by getting that right can enormously increase the productivity of a warehouse. Okay, so um, I'll get on to some of the symptoms to look for, but before I do that, uh, don't let me forget, I'll put a couple of links down below in the description below the video and also in the comments. I'll give you a link to a whole bunch of warehouse related videos that talk about these topics in more detail uh, and also to our blog on Logistics Bureau where there's loads of articles and tips there as well. So you might be sitting there wondering, do we have problems in our warehouse? How do I know? What are some of the symptoms? So typically, let me run through what some of the really common symptoms are. Low picking rates. Now you're gonna say, what's a good picking rate? This is always a little bit tricky because it's gonna depend on the industry you're in, your order profile and so on. So for some companies, uh, I have seen where 20 orders an hour being picked is actually not bad because of the, the ugly nature of the, the products being picked. You know, think of exhaust pipes and door panels and engines and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm just thinking of uh, a client in the electricity a sector where there might be huge three-ton transformers, you know. So that's kind of at the bottom end. At the top end, depending on the products and the levels of automation or something, you know, a good picking rate could be 200 picks an hour. So you need to understand for your industry, for your operation, what's a good level. And of course, that's going to be one of the KPIs that you're measuring all the time. It can be orders per hour, picks per hour, lines per hour. Any of those are really good KPIs. So if you see that dropping off, that's a sign you've got an issue. Um, space, I talked about. If you have got aisles cluttered up with products looking to be put away, that's certainly an indication of space issues and potentially the cause of that is poor inventory management. But another key giveaway is offsite storage. Um, and I'm amazed at the number of clients that we talk to and say, oh yeah, look, we've got a 20,000 square meter warehouse here. Oh, but we, we're renting 5,000 down the road as well. Well, what can we do there to try and reduce that need for that offsite storage? It's not just trying to make your 20,000 more efficient. How can we reduce uh, the offsite storage? We're currently doing that actually with an automotive company, just trying to get rid of that extra storage. Uh, so space, low picking, um, slow receipting and put away. This is always a symptom that something's not going quite right. Um, let me give you a ballpark figure. If you've got product arriving on the dock and it's still not put away, ready for dispatch or sale within 24 hours, that's not good. Now, you're probably watching this and thinking, what, we do it in two or three hours. That's good, you know, and a lot of fast moving consumer goods warehouses will do that. They'll have it put away within a couple of hours. Um, you know, depending on the, in the industry, it can be a lot slower. I've seen warehouses where it could take four or five days to get stuff put away. You know, so I'm letting you off lightly. <laughs> if it's not put away within 24 hours, you've got a problem. If it's fast moving stuff, it should be a heck of a lot quicker than that as well. Because not only are you clogging up the warehouse, that product's not available for the customer. Excess travel of pickers, I've talked about. Um, very interesting, if you're not that close to your warehouse operations, get down into the warehouse and, and spend a bit of time with the pickers and, and go along with them and see how they're doing the picking operations. And if they're wandering backwards and forwards, you know, and traveling a great distance in the aisles and kind of wandering all over the warehouse, I say you've got a problem. You need to do that sort of ABC analysis and lay out your products so that you're creating a much more efficient picking environment. Uh, and then of course, people will often say, uh, our costs are going up, our cost per order are going up. That's a clear indication that something's not quite right in the warehouse. So there we go, Look, a quick gallop through. Some of the issues that uh, we're seeing a lot of these days around capacity and performance and inventory. Uh, some of the solutions maybe that you can think about and there's gonna be some links there that you can look at to, to see those in more detail and some of those symptoms to watch out for. And if you enjoyed the video, do hit the like button, do hit subscribe and that helps the channel enormously. See you soon.